Hello, I have another prophetic word for you. <clears throat> this may not be for you. It could be. It may not be. You will know. God says to be content with what you have. Okay, I don't know who I'm talking to. This doesn't mean that he's not working on the area or, or in that particular scenario, that the circumstance that you're in, the, the thing that is the main focus of your life right now that is a worry to you. That, again, this doesn't mean that he's not going to help you or do what you believe he's going to do or what you've heard before that he's going to do or what you have been sure that he's going to do in that situation up until now. He is. But there are other things at play that he cannot let you in on yet and that he wants you to learn. <clears throat> and so, and regardless, he wants you to be content with what you have. Because when you start to, it's to do with gratitude. It's to do with gratitude. It's to do with appreciation. It's to do with understanding that all we have is right now, this very moment. What is it that you have to be grateful for right now? Things that we overlook, that we take for granted, things that we don't even acknowledge we just look at it as the basics, as a given. There are people that cannot even plant their feet on the floor in the morning when they wake up. They're at the mercy, they are at the... They have a different... They are... They, they, many of them could still be in Christ. Many of them may still... They have. A, they were on a different path. But what you and I find easy and take for granted is a struggle for them. And it's something that they have to think about consciously. There are people that don't have the ability to walk. Their eyes, they cannot see. There are people that can't hear. Listen, there are people that function and go above and beyond with these uh, inabilities. I'm not judging, I'm not saying that if someone doesn't have these things, they are of no value okay I don't mean that what I mean is we take for granted many things in our lives that are we just see it as a given we don't even we're not even and that's say that's saying there is someone always worse off than yourself it's the truth and I know you might get sick of hearing this maybe you've heard this a lot in your life like, oh well it could be worse or at least you have this or at least you have that but it's the truth and God wants you to think about it a bit more in a bit more depth than you have before You might, your living conditions might not be the way you would like them to be at the moment. But you have a home. You have a home. You have a roof over your head. You are warm. Where I am right now, it is absolutely freezing outside. It's cold. The weather is cold. There are people out there finding shelter under plastic sheeting. Scripture tells us to be content in all circumstances. Paul said that he has learned to be content in all circumstances. And we need to take a leaf out of his book. We need to learn from that page in Scripture. Because the Bible also tells us if you can steward little, then you can steward much. The man that can take care of a little can take care of... You can be given more responsibility. We all know that. We all know that just from life. If you're able to, you know, it's like a le like levels. When you're, when you're able to work on this level, then you can move on to the next. If you can be content in this circumstance, then you can be content in the next. And remember, we always want to rely on Christ. We don't want to ever have to rely on... So if you're waiting for that, if you're waiting for that promotion, if you're waiting for that pay rise if you're waiting for that breakthrough whatever it may be it doesn't have to be financial or you're waiting for that breakthrough don't don't just keep pinning everything on that don't put your life on hold until that comes through because what you're showing what you're demonstrating is a spirit of lack and if you, and, and it means that you're not fulfilled unless you have that thing and that means that you're sort of you're idolizing that thing and you're making that thing your god 
but Christ is your God. And we are always in a place of gratitude because God has already done what he has to do for us. Let's be honest. This is five minutes, this life. It's five minutes. It's five minutes. We're going to one day wonder what we were worried about. Eternity, in comparison to eternity. Be content with what you have. And I'll tell you something as well. If you show God that you can make the most of what you have, you'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. Just just when you've forgotten about that thing that you were pinning all your hopes on is when it will come through because you've you've unlocked that level. You've realised if, if you can demonstrate that you're you can function, you can be OK here, that that means you're ready for the next stage because you don't want to get to that stage. OK, I'm so desperate to have that thing. I'm just so desperate to move. I'm so desperate to to move up, like, up in my job or to move to that place or to whatever it may be, whatever it may be. If you're so desperate for it, then it's not going to go when you get it then you're going to be desperate to hold on to it then you're going to do everything and you're and you're you will be you will be serving that thing rather than that thing serving you and why would god give that to you that's why would he give it to you when you're in that when you're in that frame of mind in that in that state why would he give it to you when your spirit is like that so dependent upon it rather than on him you need to learn to be content with what you have and you need to learn gratitude. You need to develop the gratitude in you. I'm, I'm not trying to patronise you. I don't mean you need to learn gratitude. I mean, you need to focus on it a bit more, really study this subject that we're discussing so that you can, so that you can move on. Not, not, don't do it in order to move on because that God can, God will not be mocked. You can't fool God. Truly come to that place where you are content with what you have. Even, it, it could be anything. It could even be like your weight. You're not content with the size that you are and the way you look, but your body is healthy. It works. Be content. Be glad. You are in a position where you can do something about it. But still take care of yourself. Don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait until tomorrow to start looking a bit fresh and to start start cleaning up yourself. Your temple is still at the te it's still the temple of God, regardless of of its size, of its appearance. Just look after it. Take care of it. Start now. Be content with what you have. Be content with the size you have. I don't mean just ignore it and just uh, so keep eating. I don't mean that. I don't mean oh, oh yeah, I'm content with what I'm happy the way I am. Let me just. I don't mean that. I mean take care of what it is that you have. That's what I mean. That's what I mean with regards to everything. That home that you have that you're dissatisfied, take care of it. Look after it. Make it a palace. Clean it up. Organise it. Decorate it. Demonstrate the appreciation that you have for it. Your life, your home, your car. Take it to the car wash. Get it clean. Get it waxed. Vacuum it out. Hoover it, whatever you want. To. Clean it all inside. Clean all the dashboard. Be glad that you have a car. That could take you from A to B. Make sure it's functioning properly. Put some new fresh oil in it. <sighs> okay. And that's that could be metaphorical for for many other things as well in life. So that's the word that God has for you. You will know if it's applicable to you or not. God bless you. I love you. The love of Christ. Uh, see you again, God willing.